Hello, I just thought I would share what I got going on here, just the minute behind me. This was a little project that I took on, a little bit of a distraction from my normal uh, everyday thing. I wanted to see if I could set up a simple uh, small camera array to try and get some head scans. I, I've been wanting to do this for ages. And here at the university, there's no photography class happening at the moment. So I was able to get eight matched cameras. They're all 700D Canons, a little bit dated, a little bit old, uh, but they're working really well for this. I also have two 5D Mark IIs, also kind of kind of old. One of them is mine. One of them uh, is also with the university. So here I've got 10 cameras set up. They're all kind of aimed under this stick here. I got a little mannequin head over here that's been helping me aim my cameras. So I set all the cameras up, aim in here. I've got these nice lights, fill the whole thing out with light. And uh, I've got all the gear necessary to run these cameras. So I needed to buy a few things. Uh, these power packs here to power the camera with, with uh, AC power. Got those from AliExpress, not very expensive. If you go the AliExpress method, if you get the Canons, forget about it, too expensive. I also needed to get a, uh, a thing that fires all of these cameras at once. So for that, I'm using this thing here. This is the uh, camera shutter splitter CSS10, and it comes from Flying Fox Cam. You can also use the Esper boxes for this. Uh, the beauty of this thing here, it's, it's made very nicely. It's machined really, uh, high precision machining, really quite nice. And it takes 10 cameras, which is what I've got. So that works out nicely. These lights that I'm using here, these are Nova's uh, from Aperture P300. Fantastic lights, you can control them with an app and uh, they output a lot of light. I also tried some of these other lights. This is um, not an RGB light. This is just a, um, uh, what do they call this? You know, um, color temperature light. Uh, and with a nice China ball fixture Bowen mount at the front. And I also, this is what I started with. I started with that uh, and these two light domes, also aperture lights. So all three of them are using the same light. Um, and they, they worked quite well, but these uh, Novas that I'm using now are producing much more light. So I'll go over here and I'll show you my little control surface. This is where I've been uh, setting up my cameras. I also have everything up here on the screen with uh, some of the results from reality capture. So this is the 10 camera results. And then here is kind of scan that we're getting, which uh, I I'm pretty happy with. I had a green screen behind here, but I've taken it down because it wasn't really, wasn't really helping anything. I, there was no, no real need to have the green screen. Now I have a couple of people who've been uh, giving me some guidance on how to do all this, a couple of professionals, and they recommended the software to control the cameras, uh, a software called Smart Shooter Pro, which I learned was quite pricey. So I did a little bit of investigation to see if there was any less pricey alternatives because this is just a bit of an experimentation. I didn't really know what kind of results I was gonna get or anything. And I learned that there is some software called DigiCam Control which is open source and I tried it out and it seems to work for everything that I need. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is it here. There's an interface that lets you capture a photo from the selected camera here with all of my cameras connected to a powered USB three um, hub. Uh, I can see all of my cameras just mounted. There are, you know, to be honest, there are a bunch of errors that pop up from the Canon EOS application and also this application pops up some errors like, um, do you want to create a log file and things like that? I've just been clicking through it and it still, it still seems to be doing what I need. So it still works even with those errors. There's a button up here, this one, that will let you manage your cameras. So if you open this, you get a window that shows you all of your cameras. There's all 10 of my cameras here and it lets you rename them here with this gear icon. So I gave all of my cameras names. By default, it will show you a serial number. Uh, and it will also let you do a live view and set the settings on one camera and propagate them across, etc. So I've used this to set up all of the cameras. Once the cameras are all set up, 
you could trigger them from this software, but they won't fire synchronously. They won't fire at the same time. So what I've got is that, that uh, sync control box and just one of these standard, you know, Canon, uh, you know, things with the button on it that you would normally stick right in the side of the camera. This is running through uh, that sync box. This is plugged into the port that says sync. All the rest of the cameras are plugged into the other ports. And when I hit the button, all of the cameras go at once. It sounds like this. Do you hit the, hit the button, the software will automatically bring in all of those images. Everything you just saw, I recorded months ago. Uh, I scanned about a dozen people and it was a fun project, but I never did anything with that data. I didn't even cut together those clips until just now because I had other pressing, pro more pressing projects. So I parked all of that uh, and didn't do anything until just the other day when this MetaHuman mesh feature comes out where well, I realized this is all much more usable and interesting now. See, before then, to take a scan data and turn it into a nice mesh with good topology that you could make something out of was a, was a laborious process. It took a lot of steps. Uh, and I didn't have the space or time to do those things. But now, uh, with this new feature, uh, I'm really excited about all this scan data that I have. And, and I'm going to share with you how to turn that kind of data into a, a playable character. But before I do, I want to talk about the scan array and cover all of the bits you might need if you want to try and make a scanning array like I did for scanning human heads. So I mentioned that I've got 10 cameras in that array. Eight of them were Canon 700D cameras. Now these cameras are very affordable on the secondhand market right now. Uh, I also had two of these cameras that were 5D Mark IIs. These are also relatively affordable. These cameras are getting pretty old, but this is a nice full frame sensor with a high resolution image. Uh, and I felt like it might really help me get a higher resolution texture in particular. Uh, so I threw them in there as well. The other pieces that you'll need, I'm gonna show you now here, make sure that I cover them. You'll need power supply for each of your cameras. I got mine from AliExpress. You'll need a USB cable, long one that has a USB mini uh, I believe it's called. This is um, neat. You need one of these for each camera and you'll need a powered USB uh, You know hub powered USB hub that has enough slots for as many cameras that you have uh, And you'll need one of these kind of Canon uh, Triggers that is for an electronic trigger to fire your shutter You only need one of these uh, and you'll need some way to split that. And I'm using this uh, CSS10 shutter splitter from Flying Fox Cam. I'll leave a link to this website in the description. This has got 10 ports. On each end is a sync port. And the sync can be daisy chained to another one of these so you can fire as many cameras as you want uh, by just linking them together. Uh, you'll also need a cable that goes from here to the camera and I have uh, some of these. This is a, just like a little springy uh, extension kind of a thing and from Flying Fox Cam you can get a cable that goes from here to here and this goes into your camera. So I recommend that. That's what I did. Uh, I had a different one of these, say, you know, one for the 700D and you need a different one for the 5D Mark II. Uh, and I think those are all the bits. And with that, you can make an array just like I did. You need a, probably a laptop or a computer of some kind to run the, the software. Uh, Digicam Control is the name of that software. It's open source uh, and it worked pretty reliably for me. Sometimes I would get drop frames, but for the most part, it always worked. 
Uh, I think that's everything with regard to the scan array. Now let me show you what I did with Unreal Engine and the new MetaHuman feature. Here I'm showing in Reality Capture I have made myself a tidy mesh uh, just the face mask and a little bit of ears at around uh, 800,000 polygons and I've brought this into Unreal Engine including the reprojected texture. Now I'm enabling the MetaHuman plugin which is a requirement for this feature and restarting the engine. When the engine restarts I'm going to launch Quixel Bridge again Make sure that I'm logged into my account as per the documentation. So this is all documented. I'm not doing anything that's not documented here. I'm just following the instructions that were given. And making sure that my mesh looks as expected. Now, I noticed that my mesh wasn't facing the direction that matched the reference image in the, in the documentation. So I tried initially force front X axis, but that didn't seem to do anything. When I re-imported, it was exactly the same. So I used the image, the reference image in the documentation to determine I needed to rotate 180 on the Z axis. Uh, I set up my material initially as an unlit material with emissive, but the examples had it as a lit material. I didn't know if that was important, so that's what I did. Uh, just did what was, what was in the example. I made the MetaHuman identity uh, asset and opened it up with my, added my mesh, chose one of these bodies at medium height for my character, uh, and then started to set up the, the view for the feature detection. So the feature detection uh, in the documentation says it requires uh, a good, a well-framed view at a field of view uh, 20 degrees or less, so a long lens. I picked 18 degrees and then framed up something, uh, framed up something and created one of these reference frames and then picked the track active frame to get the feature detection. I also, as per the directions, tried toggling off the lock and toggling on the tracking and notice it really does a, a fantastic job of tracking the eyelids in particular uh, but also the mouth very nice you can a b your your meshes or show them both at the same time and when you're all done you can click the button to send it to metahuman now this bit i chopped out a lot there was a lot of waiting here for it to go up to the cloud but once it's in the cloud you can start the metahuman creator application and define uh, your textures and enable all manner of editing including uh, blending influence from your m scanned mesh versus, versus the, uh, the average metahuman mesh. I picked some pants, I picked a shirt, and then uh, started just working on uh, setting some skin. Now here's me looking at the documentation and here I'm looking to see if there's a way to use my albedo texture and reproject this onto the metahuman but I did not find any uh, any information about that so I just picked some colors and some values for these different parts including the eyes and the grooms uh, and I skipped over most of me fiddling around with this but eventually I got to a place where it looked a little like my example and when I was done, I sent it back. Uh, I think I think you send it back up into the cloud in order to get. No, you you, yeah, you save it. It's in the cloud, and then you have to download it, and then add it to your project. And so the project that I've got here, I've created a third-person blueprint project and added my MetaHuman to it. I've made a new level and an open-world example level and set this to be my default level for the project and I've enabled the MetaHuman plugin and then I went and got my MetaHuman and like I said this part here this step in particular took a, a little while to download uh, but there it is it's still compiling shader, shaders that's why you don't see shaders on the head uh, I duplicated the third person blueprint and put it in with my MetaHuman and here I'm gonna basically copy 
the meshes and grooms from the MetaHuman blueprint and put it in my third person blueprint. I also am making an animation blueprint for this Doug character uh, and I'm going to use the retargeting method so that I can retarget the motions from the mannequin asset onto my MetaHuman asset. You'll need to zero out all the transforms for the MetaHuman meshes and then you'll need to point them all, all except the face, you need to point them at the blueprint that's gonna do the retargeting. And if you've got that right, you should see it snap into the pose of the, uh, the mannequin. And then you hide the mannequin, but you leave the joints to evaluate. And this is how you can get the playable, uh, a quick way to get the playable character scan of your thing. So here is my Doug character running around in the world. So all of this uh, I learned from the documentation and there's a couple of videos about this retargeting onto a third person blueprint that you can find on YouTube. And all of this uh, I did yesterday. And if I could do it, you can do it. So thank you very much for watching once again my channel and I hope you come back again. I hope this was useful. And if you need a longer video for some of these steps, you know, leave a comment and maybe I can make one of those. Thanks. Take care.